Yeah. What just came to your mind as you were thinking about Vincent Chin? Um, 9-11 and its impact on South Asians. Do you see any differences in the, in the reasons for the attack? No, not really. The guys thought he was Japanese when he was obviously Chinese and didn't think to differentiate just like that. Like um, Muslim terrorists who are on the list, I mean, Sikhs get stopped because they have turbans and they're asked to remove their turbans uh, even though they're a completely different religion and completely different culture. And for them, removing a turban in public is like, you know, dropping your pants. So it's, it's a huge insult. One of the ugliest legacies of this crisis is homegrown. The surge of intolerance and hate crimes against Muslims and people who are mistaken for them. How bad is it? Congressman John Kuski, Republican from Louisiana, apologized today for this remark. If I see someone that comes in that's got a diaper on his head and a fan belt around his diaper on his head, that guy needs to be pulled over and checked. When 9-11 happened and the Japanese American community was literally the first to come out and say, this cannot happen again. We do not want our South Asian American brothers and sisters and our Arab American brothers and sisters put in detention camps and strip searched and taken away from their homes and um, had their have their rights erased as Americans. That was probably one of the most beautiful moments of my young adult life. September 11th, the day after uh, Japanese Americans started rallying to the defense of Arab and Muslim Americans and South Asians and requesting that they be protected from the type of discrimination that they had suffered during World War II. My parents were put in camps. My older brother, who was one year old at the time, was essentially considered a spy and a saboteur, which is ridiculous. It was one of the worst civil nightmares this country has ever faced. To see another community come out with such vigor and forcefulness on behalf of another community, because they had lived that experience, you can't ask for better allies or for better support. And you know, that's, that's the direction our community needs to continue to move in. So to say, I've lived this, you shouldn't have to live this. Dr. King said a threat to justice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. And I think it, it behooves us uh, to try to support each other where our goals and our interests are the same. Uh, they might not always be, but there are a lot of areas where we have common interests. And uh, even if we don't have common interests, I mean, it's important to create those interpersonal relationships and loyalties so that you can reach across ethnic lines and get support from people who may not ordinarily have supported you. There is a growing identity that uh, we should be united. I think that is a difficult and always um, a struggle to, to get there, but I think it's a struggle in a good way. I'm starting to see more pan-Asian pan -Asian things, people among different groups getting together, doing things, but even neighborhoods changing. Like I'm seeing Koreans come into different neighborhoods, Korean Americans, and, and vice versa, Chinese going here. And just little things like that make all the difference. And I'm seeing pop culture stuff. It's, it's a pan-Asian group doing stuff. And it's just starting now. So if you're Asian American, I kind of think if you're into community building Asian American, this is the time. It took a few hundred years for the African Americans to come together. It didn't, just didn't happen overnight. The Civil Rights Act, the Voting Rights Act, you know, while these were legislative acts that were passed, but there was a fight, there were sacrifices that were given. So Asian Americans need to understand that it requires a lot of work, a lot of sacrifices. If we're going to build forward and, and move ahead, we're going to need to work together. And it's when we have these moments, when we did work together, that we need to sort of remember. Vincent's death should not be forgotten. And if, in fact, I hope it becomes an event that inspires Asians to want to seek justice in this country. To become more active and, and assertive in this country, as if to say, you know, we're not going to take this again. This is not going to happen again without a fight. So. I think it really is up to the, the next generations to come to really make that difference and to say, hey, we're not going to just be stepped on anymore. You know, you have to listen to us. We have something to say. We have important things to contribute. We have been contributing, but we're not going to be ignored anymore. And so I think that's what the next generation really has an opportunity to do and really must do. Before I'd heard about Vincent Chin, I didn't really have a social conscience about being Asian American. But after I learned about Vincent Chin and his tragedy, I became much more aware of our responsibility as Asian Americans to stand up for our rights 
And so from that point on, I realized that I wanted to be part of the change and 